In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham. Natalie uh, says hello to you. She's behind the scenes today. We've got a very special guest in the studio. Again, we're very excited. If you were watching the program last week, we had Ari Abramovitz from uh, Hael Hael in the studio, the Lone Soldier organization. So we are very excited that we've been able to get him again into the studio. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for coming across, and uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you. Uh, Ari is originally from uh, Rockland County in New York in the United States and uh, he's been uh, in the Israeli Army County Terror Unit and uh, uh, Hael, a Hael, Lone Soldier Organization to look after uh, the, particularly the uh, Anglos but also I guess from, from any Lone Soldier from outside of Israel. Correct. We deal with soldiers coming from outside of, you know, from all over the world and not even if you didn't make Aliyah or if you um, come in as called a machal, which is mitnadev chutzaretz, which means actually a volunteer from overseas, and you didn't make a, become an Israeli, you could still be part and join the IDF. So it's just something interesting that we have. Now, um, you, I, one of the things is with the lone soldiers is that it isn't, you provide a home for them so they have somewhere they can uh, stay and they can have something to eat and particularly on Shabbat they can, which is very important obviously for the Jewish people that because this is usually a family time where they would be around the table and, and, and eating together, you provide that. But you also provide a listening ear and I guess you have many stories of when you've had to provide a listening ear to soldiers who... That's actually something that we do is the, the listening ear for uh, every lone soldier is the, probably one of the most important parts, if not the most important part about what we do for the lone soldiers. It's a lot of soldiers, you know, you see a soldier walking down the street when you come to Israel or even when you're, you know, you see pictures and the soldiers look all tough and really it's what's on the inside of them. And for a lot of lone soldiers that come to Israel, whether it's a, you know, a boy or a girl, they could be coming from struggling families or they're having family issues and the one thing that the Israeli army does provide for a soldier is the structure which a lot of them do need and they don't have beforehand is they'll have a place to go to have a, and also have three meals a day and something of self-esteem walking down the street wearing a uniform being able to be proud of what they're doing and if you have a gun that you take off base it's even more exciting you know people look at you want to come take pictures with you and they look at you as the all-time hero walking around town so it's definitely something that is, uh, for a lone soldier, that's the main, the main feel for them is that, you know what, I'm coming here and I'm going to be able to feel good about myself, have that self-esteem part. So that's the, one of the things that they're going through is the social aspect of, you know, I have struggles at my house and back home. And when they come to us at 11 at night, 12, uh, 12, 1 in the morning with, you know, there are different issues and they're crying to you, it's, that's, that's what they need. They need someone there that's going to be, you know what, Ari, my, you know, this is going on with my family. What am I supposed to do right now? Could you give me some advice? And it's being there for them and knowing that there's so many guys that are going through it and girls and having a family that, I you know my mother-in-law is a therapist and um, a mental health counselor and all of my other relatives as well. I speak to them, but the soldiers want someone that is, is one of them, meaning is, another, is a lone soldier them, himself, so he understands where they're coming from. And that's definitely where we're out there for them. And, now, uh, if people would like to support the organization and uh, you're watching today and you think, oh, this is something I really would like to, to help financially, this is something um, that, that I can do to help Israel and stand with Israel, and you're particularly concerned about the soldiers of Israel, uh, the IDF and, and the lone soldiers, uh, what's the best way for them to, to be able to financially support? So you could financially support by going to LoneSoldierHome.org forward slash donate. Again, it's LoneSoldierHome forward slash donate. And again, we're not f funded by anyone except for generous people that are, care about the IDF and the Lone Soldiers. Now, um, one of the, the issues that's facing many armies at the moment and uh, Afghanistan and Iraq and uh, indeed the Israeli army with um, Operation Protective Edge and other operations that um, they've been involved in is post-traumatic stress and I guess the lone soldiers also have this issue that they 
that they haven't got family, but they are in a combat situation or, or, or a situation. And I guess they bring this with them to... to uh... It's actually interesting that you mentioned that the PTSD, the post-traumatic stress disorder, is, uh, is common, but it's, it's common in uh, you know, more of a discreet way that you won't really notice that what's going on unless you really could speak to a soldier. And I know on a personal level, speaking to, speaking to the soldiers and hearing their stories about what happened while they were in Gaza or on a mission, and we had last year a soldier that was in the middle of speaking and he was started speaking to a whole crowd right after Gaza and he just broke down crying. He couldn't continue. And it was just something that was, you know, when he had a sniper trying to pick him off while he was in Gaza. So for him, that was very traumatic. And, you know, but being able to have a friendship with him, being able to speak to him and finding out, you know, what's wrong and just going through it, being able to talk it out, that was something that was, that's very important for a lot of them. And again, there are also psychologists, therapists out there that do help with PTSD. So that that's a lot a lot of soldiers, you know, that when they're when they do have the PTSD or even symptoms of it, being able to come to us and be able to push them in the right direction of, you know, the of real help that they need. That's one of the things that I like doing. And there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, what, I'm a psychologist. I want to be able to help out and give my time. We had a trauma therapist that came in a few months ago and he came a few weeks in a row for different soldiers during the week. And we all did it together and for everyone who had their own trauma and it was incredible to see how the soldiers reacted so positively to it. Is, is, is some, of, um, some of the help that's given, is that just reliving the trauma or going through what happened and re, uh, retelling your story and... Uh, so actually it depends that on... Help? It actually, that, that helps for some of the guys and some of them like to do it privately that there's some of the trauma therapies that we have out there are dealing with uh, that you don't even have to talk about it and that's something that a lot of the guys like to do is the the therapist will just speak to them and you know uh, tell them you know whatever this thing that's bothering you if you're able to face it and different things and slowly work it out and it's incredible to see the the success on some of them it's like wow there are new people out there now now um, one of the things about the IDF is that uh, the, the the lone soldiers will be coming uh, to Israel to volunteer and I've obviously left their families uh, behind that's the, the the nature of the the lone soldier issue and uh, they will come here and not all their equipment is provided is it by the IDF you have for example for the jackets in the winter it's actually interesting. I've seen soldiers without them so there are uh, the Israeli army does provide equipment but the because the Israeli army is so strapped on their budget and their defense systems and making sure that they're able to provide to the basic needs of the whole army, we do lack, and all those soldiers, and including being a reservist right now, we lack on the basic, uh, you know, sometimes the needs of making sure that we have proper uh, water system, making sure we have proper, in the winter, having proper sweaters. And the Chayal Chayal, during last winter, when the soldiers, they come to Israel, they get their own apartment, the army pays them, you know, gives money to subsidize an apartment, and they don't have a heater in their house. And being able to say, you know what, there last year making sure during the winter that every guy can come and they can go you need a heater for your apartment we have ones for you and they're all donated by people that really cared and making sure they have sweaters and shooting gloves and ski hats but those are things that you know what they're the army has but they're not good quality they're used by 50 other people they're from the 80s the 70s and you're like why would I want to wear this I'd rather not wear anything and get sick than be wearing something that someone else used so really when someone wants to say, you know what, I want to give gear to the soldiers, it's something very special because they're getting brand new stuff, something that they could take with them and you know they're going to use it and it's very well used and needed. And, and if, you, if you're watching the program today and you'd like to give a specific gift of uh, equipment or um, some clothing for uh, Israeli soldiers, they can do that. They can, I guess, when they go to the website, they can maybe ask, can they? Or yes, you can go on the website. You could ask. Uh, you could ask uh, to just email us, and you could say what you're interested in donating. If you, you know, it's the middle of a snowstorm, you're like, wow, I feel cold. And you're like, you know, I want to be able to make sure that these soldiers don't feel cold, so I want to donate for them. You know, some coats. Just send us an email, and you know, donate the money, and it'll go straight to the soldiers. And you also uh, take gifts as well to the the bases and for Purim, and uh, you were. Uh, saying uh, last week you, you take uh, the special box and you fill your whole, the whole place up so you can't move with right. all of that. So the one thing is being able to go to a lone soldier base. And this week we had, uh, two weeks ago I was in New York and I spoke, to, uh, I spoke to a mother and she was telling me how, you know, my son's in a certain unit in artillery and they never get anything. And I said, you know what, I want to make sure that the next time I'm going to be going to a base, 
that I'm going to go to your son's unit. And it was last night that I actually went at, uh, I went to this guy's base all the way down south. And the, the smiles on the soldiers' faces, being able to have a pizza party all together, and knowing that people cared about them, it was incredible. And the soldiers all wrote on a big sign. They wrote a big thank you, and they're writing all signing their names. And it was someone that actually had Parkinson's disease. His name was Jonathan, and his name is Jonathan. And he donated the pizza party in honor of the soldiers. And it was just all the soldiers just thank you so much. You don't realize how you made my night. Thank you. Get well soon. And it was, it's special because they appreciate it. They know that no one, you know, they're out there and they're there the whole week, two weeks, three weeks at a time. And to really be able to think about them, it's special. Uh, if you would like to um, d donate like a, a pizza party or something, then do, uh, do contact Ari and uh, the organization Hiel, uh, Hiel because you'll make such a difference. And I know that, 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 that there is there somebody or oh, there's people watching today who want to do that. They really want to help and uh, they'll, be, I, uh, they'll be in touch with you now. Um, one of the things is, is that the IDF, uh, which, some, which a lot of our viewers will be aware of, but there are uh, uh, IDF bases uh, obviously on the borders of Israel which are temperamental in the, with the security uh, situation. So the lone soldiers not only have to have all the cultural change and learning we were talking about last week about learning Hebrew, but they're also the very dangers are, are, of being there because you, know, you really are on the front line. It's, uh, that is a challenge that every lone soldier faces because they want to be in the, they want to be able to give back as well. They want to, and they go to elite units. So you have lone soldiers that are, one of the, uh, are in the top units and all over the IDF and all over the, and all over the whole Israel. And they deal with, uh, you know, knowing on a day-to-day -day basis that there's dangers. And last, so last year when we went out to the bases on the night of Purim, when we were talking about the care packages, we went down to Gaza. And it was 2 in the morning, and one of the lone soldiers told us we were right by the border crossing of Nachal Oz, where there was a four-year-old boy, Daniel Turgeman, that was killed uh, by the war. But this was before the war, and the sol this lone soldier from Canada told me, you know, Ari, our commanders told us that there's tunnels, terror tunnels, right under us right now, and at any moment they could come up and kill us. And this was before the war. And to realize that these guys are just, they're giving up, they're sacrificing their lives, and they know it and their parents know it and even the parents go through a lot of times of trauma and they don't a parent thinks come in America or outside of Israel because they don't know what's going on they think that the second their son gets to Israel they're already in the army they're already down by the border while they don't even know that it takes a few months and being able to speak to parents all the time and telling them you know what you know it's not that bad it's their your kids are okay right now they're just training it's something it's a big relief for them so we have parents that are calling us and are very worried about their kids so you want to think that we only have PTSD with the, you know, with the soldiers, but the parents are going through such a stress because they don't know what's going on. And we, we, we had um, recently the, the uh, uh, American parents of the uh, boy from Texas, I believe he was Sean from. Carmelli. Yeah, yeah from exactly. Sean's family came to Israel. Uh, Sean was one of the soldiers who very sadly was killed in Operation um, Protective Edge. Uh, was that something that affected your organization? It's actually my partner Morty Botnick and uh, family that he's, he was very close with knew Sean very very well so it was definitely it was part of it everyone you know knew who he was and I personally didn't know him but again as, as we're growing and meeting more lone soldiers that's part of what we're here for is you know to get to know as many lone soldiers to make them feel that family and right now on you know just being able on a day-to-day -day basis be in contact with hundreds of soldiers and they just contact me with their issues and a soldier called me last night that he's getting in trouble what should he do this is this is what it's about is that personal connection and knowing that there's struggles there's issues going on and some of them aren't the best boys and because they're coming from struggling families they do have issues and you know the police get involved as well the military police call us up and there was a, you know there's boys that were struggling that were in the hospital and the army calls up Chayal Chayal and they say you know Morty, Mordechai or Ari you know, we have a soldier over here. Could you please go and speak, uh, visit him, or speak to him, and deal with him? And you know, what? that's what we're there for. And, and is is some of that that they have uh, discipline that they're not used to being in such a disciplined atmosphere as well? Or well, because a lot of them come from broken families, or you know, a lot of them were you know just hanging out on the streets and nowhere to go. That they come and it's all of a sudden you got to do this, you got to do this. Well, what do you mean? Why should I do this? I, what are you telling me what to do? And I had guys that were with me that were 32 years old that was in the army and my commander was 19 and I was 20 at the time but you know I, I saw like you know some of these people that are older they look at their commanders and it's hard and but being able to realize you know what 
that I'm doing it because I'm here. There's a special reason. That's what's important for the soldiers. Now, uh, sometimes with post-traumatic stress, uh, it com comes to the stage where, very sadly, soldiers can even commit suicide. And uh, I, I, does your organization get very much involved when there's uh, problems like psychiatric, I guess, would be the right way of putting it, psychiatric there's, issues? Over the past few months, there have been a few cases. And you know, being there, that I just stopped my day in the middle when I got a text from, uh, from a friend of a soldier saying, please help out this soldier. He's going through a really hard time right now he's you know contemplating suicide and right then you have to stop everything you're doing you know this this soldier's life is on the line he's a combat soldier he's going through a lot and you're like okay just deal with the commanders and the commanders have no idea who you are even and you're just like no I got to deal with this right now and and you know soldiers that are struggling and soldiers that break down mentally dealing with that as well it's and it's hard to see it's really it, in my heart it really hurts me to be able to see soldiers going through it and these are guys are guys that you see so jolly on the street and all of a sudden the next day you see them down and you're like what's going on what's happening and you know just to be able to get on the inside of them and some of them don't talk and you just but because you're their friend they'll be there and they'll they'll, they'll come to you and they'll just talk and that's that's the most important thing now I think Ari one of the things the viewers will be very interested in is what the atmosphere is like on Shabbat Shabbat being the special day when uh, the Jewish people have the the meal together and fellowship together and normally it's a family day but because they're lone soldiers they're not able to be with their family so maybe you can quickly give us a what 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 the atmosphere in your homes on on Shabbat and what what's it like to okay, so to be there It's actually during the beginning in the middle of the week we're already starting to cook for 80 soldiers per meal and so there's two meals on Shabbat and by the time Friday comes around, we're getting everything pretty much done, and the soldiers are streaming in from off base. And Friday night, the, you, the soldiers walk in. It's 10, 20, 30 at a time, just all piling in, all the way up to 80 soldiers. And you have uh, kitchens filled with tables, outsides filled with tables and chairs, making sure there's enough space for everyone. And they come, and they're singing together. And if you want, you can come in for two minutes, or you could just... You know, you could just stay for the whole entire night. And I'm there till 2, 3, 4 in the morning a lot of weeks. But it's very, very special to be one-on-one -on -one with the guys after the meal. And they know they don't have to just, okay, the meal's closed and you got to go. No, we're going to sit here, we're going to take out board games, and the guys are playing chess at night and all the other games. Now, I guess that it's a lot of work for the, the ladies and uh, for the wives in the, in the organization. And uh, I know you, uh, that um, you were saying about your wife's just uh, done this, is that right? Yeah, the, right the book? Uh, uh, hi, hi, Al, uh, hi, Al, and this is uh, something um, they'll be able to get from. They'll be able to get in touch with you, okay. and uh, uh, from the details will be on your screen. Uh, you can get that beautiful book on on the organization. Uh, very new, very recent, yeah. very recently produced, and um, uh, fantastic. That you're going to want to have this book. So uh, do get in touch with Ari at hi, Al, Al, hi, Al. Now. Um, the ladies will be working behind the scenes and the wives behind the scenes. What's it like for them and with, with all the work and uh, I guess a lot of hours that you work? So first thing is they're a mother and uh, not only are they mothers but they're also mothers of their own kids but the mothers of hundreds of lone soldiers as well. And the soldiers feel that, that they know that even though they're, they're not at every event, they're there behind the scenes making sure it's working. Then they're also there by most of the events. And every, you know, every single week when, when the soldiers come, they could also speak to my wife. They could speak to Mordechai's wife. And it's the constant of having them over every single night. You have soldiers staying in your own house. We have, there's four homes and two of the homes, my house and Mordechai's house. We both have the girl-owned soldiers by us, and the other two houses have the guy-owned soldiers. And for the past two years, my wife didn't have, there wasn't a night that went by that there weren't people staying at our house. And for Mordechai, when he got married, he actually he met his wife at one of the Friday night meals from a wow. former lone soldier's uh, sister. And so that was uh, something special is, you know, they, they were dealing with lone soldiers from before they got married, and now that's what they do 24 hours a day, wow. seven days a week. Wow. And um, so we, we haven't really talked to, uh, uh, so much about that, but for the girls, the, the females, uh, uh, volunteers who are coming from the United States or from around the world to volunteer with the IDF, and. And how and how how does that do you um, do you have special events for the for, for the girls? The girls actually we have uh, we usually first of all they come and they we make them feel at home. That's the most important. Is for a girl they need to have their comfort zone, and that's number one priority. And after that we do every other week my my wife and my sister 
and Mordechai's wife, they make sure that there's uh, weekly, uh, other, every, bi-weekly events that will be, whether it's, you know, painting together, another time they'll do the challah baking for the Friday night meals and the Shabbat day meals. They're actually working on the food for them, so, the soldiers and for themselves. And then they'll have, you know, a pizza and beer party, but just making them feel that, you know what, the girls are also special and we really care about you. So the girls know that and the girls will call us up at, you know, the same thing at 12, 1, 2 in the morning. I'll speak to my wife as well. And the text message is going out. They need something. And it's really, really special. Now, in, in the book, uh, Haya, the, this book, um, which they can get from um, contacting you at the website, there's uh, some of the, acti uh, uh, the activities that you do there. And I noticed that um, you also do, um, uh, for the different feasts, you do uh, gifts. And uh, the, there's also the pictures of Hanukkah. Uh, of what you were doing there, but you also do hikes. Now, I can imagine um, that, um, you know, the soldiers are marching all week, but, they, but they're but happy to go out uh, on, on hikes? So it's actually the, most of the soldiers that are before the army love going on it, and the soldiers that are in the army, it's much harder for them to. So you'll have is a lot of the former lone soldiers that are in the reserves or just they, they're, not in, they're not in the army anymore. They want to help out the guys that are going into the army. And, you know, so that's... That's where you have a lot of the soldiers come together. And we have a program called Bode Dimbiacha, which means soldiers united together, lone soldiers united. And there the former lone soldiers will go and teach the guys that are going into the army, this is how you do navigation. This is how you do scouting. And the soldiers, the guys, the soldiers that are going into the army appreciate that so much, and it's intense. And then, then that's before the army starts for a lot of these guys, but also during the holidays, when the guys get off, it's that family, the fun feel, going to these water park uh, hikes. That's, that's incredible. They just know it's 100 degrees outside. They're going to go on a hard hike, but at the end, it's going to be just having a fun time in the water. Now, um, some of the soldiers uh, don't get to see all the country for one reason or another. You, you, you men mentioning that uh, some of the lone soldiers weren't able to visit, for example, haven't had the opportunity to visit the Dead Sea or other places in Israel. And, do you, do you get involved in that? In, in we actually have something called the Shabbaton, which is every few uh, every month or so we'll have a Shabbat weekend that we'll all go up to a different area, and then during the week also we'll go to different areas that are unique and special, and we'll do tours there. We'll we'll go and explore the land, and for them it it's worth a million dollars that they could know that you know what this is something that I'm not just here coming for a Facebook photo holding a gun. No, I'm actually here because I see the land, I see what's going on, and it's something special to me. I see the people that are living here. And, for and it makes a connection for them that they, uh, they, they can see what, what the work that they're doing, what the practical reality of what Israel is. And, and again, a lot of them, for them, it makes them actually stay in, the, uh, stay in Israel after because 80% of the lone soldiers do go back to their home countries. And um, what about, yeah, I was going to talk about that. What about the, do you do th work, uh, work for the lone soldiers going back to the United States or their other countries? So we actually have a program that we're, we started recently in the United States and it's uh, taking off, which is to be able to have the former lone soldiers get together and help them out with not only social events, but also to help them make sure they have jobs, make sure they are in school because the, the main need that they're going to have after is coming from a full structure is that they can need a continuous structure. And that's something that they don't have. So we're working on that very hard. And then the guys that are going into the army, they don't know where to go, is, OK, these former lone soldiers are able to help them out. Because we went through the same thing. Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel if it's already done? It's been done. Now, uh, you, you work, I guess, very closely with the Jewish community in uh, different countries. And um, uh, how, how do they react? How does the, the different Jewish communities react to the work of the lone soldiers? They appreciate it so much. They realize that these boys and girls are, are instrumental. Not only that, a mother was crying to me a few months ago. She said, uh, you know, you spoke so beautifully. And I feel bad. My sons and uh, daughter aren't going. Obviously, I'm scared from, uh, it's scary for me to send them. But like, how does this work? And, you, and you know, like, how could you guys do it? And, and, but I'm so proud. And I said, you know, don't worry if your child doesn't go to the army. It's about that you care. And that's what it is. And these people really care and they appreciate all the work of all these young boys and girls that are coming from their home country to serve in the IDF. I guess that you've, you've got a big uh, job, really, because you've got uh, the work here in Israel and then you've got the work overseas and the connection. And, uh, and I can see the work growing because you know, there's more and more a need for a connection between the Jewish community, knowing what's uh, the position of for the soldiers and the lone soldiers in particular uh, coming to, to Israel. And uh, I can see that too. <laughs> 
it, it, your work is growing. It's it's honestly it's tripled, quadrupled, and from a year or two years ago, and it, it keeps on going so fast because of the amount of soldiers coming in. And not only that, if you just work with the soldiers that are in the army, you have right now 6,300, it's a tremendous amount of soldiers. But being able to deal with the guys that finished the army and saying, we're not just forgetting about you, we're still going to make sure to be in contact. So you really got to have a good team. And thank God we have a tremendous team around us working of really dedicated volunteers and you know some staff. We have a six-person staff right now, but it's also former lone soldiers and the wives of former lone soldiers and everyone coming together for the same cause. And uh, if, they, if they're watching today, they, well, the details are on the screen, how you can uh, support the work. They can, the best way is through the website? The best way is through the website at lonesoldierhome.org forward slash donate. And that will definitely help out tremendously. It goes directly to the soldiers. Thank you so much for coming across again today. Thank We've you very really much for enjoyed, having me. We've really enjoyed the program. And I know our viewers have very much enjoyed it and uh, learning about the work. Uh, not only of the Israeli Defense Force, which we have featured before, but the Israeli Army uh, Hael Hael uh, work with the with lone soldiers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget, you can always email us at info at in the last days, uh, dot com. And remember, we're living in the last days. Hael El Hael is a home away from home for IDF lone soldiers in Jerusalem. It's a place where we care for our soldiers every possible need, where we help those who protect us. There are three homes which are all designed to cater to our soldiers. Our goal is to make sure that every single lone soldier truly feels that he is not alone, that he is surrounded by family atmosphere even though his immediate family is not with him in Israel. Chayal El Chayal serves delicious home-cooked Shabbat and holiday meals to crowds of 50 to 70 lone soldiers every week. We provide accommodations and laundry facilities. Chayal El Chayal creates and distributes care packages. Be it welcome packages for soldiers joining the new draft, equipment for soldiers already in the field, or holiday packages. We make sure that our soldiers feel that there is always someone to care for them. We take our soldiers on hikes and outings. We host barbecues and pizza parties. And we create personalized birthday celebrations. Yet it doesn't stop here. Chayal El Chayal works continuously to provide our lone soldiers with their every need. We operate around the clock 24 hours a day and seven days a week to ensure that our brave lone soldiers are able to continue protecting the land of Israel and the Jewish people with the dignity that they deserve. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter. Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In the Last Days.